The next section of the calculation deals with embedding losses. Now, as you can imagine, as two materials come together, as they're squashed together, each surface is made up of high spots and low spots. And it's the high spots that touch each other first. What happens at the high spots is that they're subjected to a very, very high bearing stress, which sometimes gives rise to some time-dependent behaviour as those high spots settle down uh, and uh, become imbalanced. So what we see here is a form of joint relaxation where the joint will lose pretension over time. And it's usually over, well, it's mainly over the first few seconds and then less so the first few hours. Uh, but basically, uh, from what I've seen, it, it's generally settled down within 24 hours. Uh, so we get these losses occur at, uh, at the thread because they're two surfaces coming together. Uh, there are also losses at the head as the head and its mating surface comes together, the knot, and also at each, each of the joint interfaces that we've already defined on the uh, clamped tab. Uh, the other area which is very um, uh, uh, dangerous really, and that's if you ever have some paint thickness on your materials. Now paint will just move out of the way whenever it's subjected to these high stresses. So basically you can, if you have a paint thickness when you started tightening up the joint of 10 microns, then you should really assume that is going to zero over time. But this is a, a way of totting up each of the embedding losses. Uh, I ought to point out as well that um, the embedded losses that are estimated here are in fact um, very dependent upon the predominant loading on the joint. So this is the predominantly an axial load or predominantly a shear load. Uh, and it's also dependent upon the surface finish of each of the materials coming together. So down here we can see that the uh, total embedding loss is calculated uh, as 13 microns, which translates into uh, uh, an embedding loss in pretension of just under 7 kilonewtons or 7% of, of the bolt yield. We have to be careful that we don't include this factor twice. So if you know that your uh, tightening accuracy factor already includes this, then don't include it twice. And at the bottom here we can see uh, a typical uh, the typical behaviour of a bolt uh, where we would tight it up to a certain value of pretension, it very well, almost immediately uh, loses load and over time it continues to lose load over, and this is over the course of 24 hours. So uh, about three quarters of the way through the 24 hour period it's pretty much settled down 